I've always imagined that paradise will be a kind of library. Jorge Luis Borges. Hello, friends. It's my pleasure to welcome you to Inside the Writer's Cafe. I'm Cheryl Nason, and our show features not only the hottest authors, but we also like to introduce you to exciting new authors. We talk to them about themselves and about their latest work. Today, we'll be talking about a book titled Two Testaments, a comprehensive comparison of the teachings of the New Testament and the Book of Mormon by Chris Livingston. Now, our show has a somewhat unusual format. The book Two Testaments is actually written by an author who wishes to remain anonymous. The name Chris Livingston is a pseudonym, and it has a special meaning all its own. The author requested that I do the interview with Shane Leon, a reviewer of the book. Shane, thank you for joining me today on Inside the Writer's Cafe. Thank you, Cheryl, for having me. I'm I'm glad to be here. Well, you know the question that's going through our listeners' minds. They're all thinking, wait a minute, who is this guy? And why did the author choose him to represent him in his book? So, Shane, who are you and why did he choose you? Well, I'm I'm glad you mentioned the fact that I'm a reviewer. I I've been reviewing viewing, uh, reviewing two testaments for uh, several years with Chris Livingston. Um, let's start with the the pseudonym uh, Chris Livingston. If you take the T out of Livingston and move it over to Chris at the end, it becomes Christ Living Son. And the reason for that is that two testaments being a comparison of all of the doctrines. Uh, from the New Testament and all of the doctrines from the Book of Mormon is the message of Jesus Christ. And as Chris was going through the process of researching and writing the book, he just realized that he didn't, he couldn't take any credit for the, the message that was coming out. And that grew into him to be a desire to remain anonymous. And he chose, he chose me to do this interview and to help out in this way because he and I have been uh, discussing closely aspects of two testaments on and off for uh, a number of years. And I, I've been through the book several times and read it and soaked in its message. And, and, uh, and he and I have built a, a relationship of trust. And, and I, and that's why he's asked me to be here today. Well, he's a pretty interesting person. I mean, he has a PhD. He's gone through two careers. He's been working on this book. How long? The, the book itself for 35 years. Wow. Now, how many pages did the book wind up being? It's 600 pages long. Wow. That includes all the appendices at the end and, and all of the preface material. Where did he get the idea for this book? I mean, this is one of those things that when I read the title, I thought, nobody's done this before? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it was a bit. It was a little bit of a surprise to him too, as, as he was doing all the research. Uh, so let me start the, the idea coming to him. It it um, it sort of it started out as a desire to to read. He, as a child, he desired to read. Uh, he wanted to be able to read uh, books, but he just never developed the habit and, and never really got into it. He, he'd had um, you know a few people influence him. But when he got into college, at the end of college, during his senior year, he finally started reading. And after about 10 years of reading as, as much as he could voraciously and in, uh, as widely as possible, uh, he, he woke up one morning. Um, so this would be his early 30s or so. He woke up one morning and, and the idea came to him, well, why don't you list out all of the doctrines in both the New Testament and, and the Book of Mormon and line them up side by side just to see what comes out. And the interesting thing, that's when the interesting thing began to happen. That very day, he started to get sick. And um, it was it, it started out as, as uh, you know, a sinus infection, and it turned into other illnesses that went on for about nine months when so he got really, really sick. And uh, some close friends of his, this was in San Diego, some close friends of his said, well, let's get you to the hospital. This is getting pretty serious. And that's when they di- diagnosed him with cancer. 
And it was a particular type of cancer that was very, <clears throat> very aggressive. And the, the prognosis of the day, this was the early 80s, um, it was very, very bad. They gave him about a 2% chance of living. Um, when it, and in fact, he, he survived. He was one of the very few um, who survived that. And um, he counted that as, as a miracle in his life and continued um, he started the research at that point and continued it on. And the, the research itself took a couple of decades. And li- he, but he did it. He finished it. And that's when he thought he was done. He'd lined up all of the doctrines in the Book of Mormon and the New Testament and, uh, to see what, what came out of it. And he thought he was done. And then as he started talking to a few, um, a few uh, experts in ancient scripture, it became clear to him that that this this uh, research wasn't just meant for the academic community. It was it was it was to take on a larger um, audience, and that's when he decided to put together a synopsis of the whole thing. And that's where Two Testaments comes from. It's been a continuous process for 35 years to get it into this state until he was finally able to publish it. Wow, that is truly a calling. I mean, really. And it, it's funny that you mentioned the target audience because that was something that I was wondering. I wondered if it was meant for scholars or was it meant mm-hmm. for just John Q. Public? Yeah, you know, Chris would tell you, in fact, there's, there's a page up in the, in the introductory pages addressing who is, who, who is this book for? Because that, you know, a lot of folks I'm sure will, will wonder. It, it, it written, Originally, I suppose it, it could have been seen as an academic um, as an academic work, but the message of the New Testament, God did not intend the message in the New Testament in the Book of Mormon to remain academic. In fact, it shouldn't stay there. It should be for everybody. And so he lists out, Chris lists out um, everyone, you know, everyone who has an interest in learning the true nature of reality, which is the true nature of God. Um, this book is intended for them. Um, it's written every page is has new content. There are diagrams for folks who are more visually um, uh, more visually inclined, and there's obviously um, plenty of words to go around, and there, there are quotes from prophets all over the place, and um, in addition to the comparison itself. So it's really intended for you know, for anyone, you know, parents who want to learn what the gospel of Christ is and what it is not, and then want to be able to teach that to their kids, you know, um, religious leaders who want to learn more about uh, what the doctrine of God is, and um, folks who who want to see how the doctrines in the Book of Mormon and the New Testament line up. And, and uh, so really, it's intended for, for everyone. You know, let's I know the book has eight chapters, that it's divided into eight sections. Let's, can we give our listeners a little bit of an overview of those sections so that they get an idea of how the book sort of rolls and travels? Absolutely, sure. You know, um, chapter one is, the title of chapter one is The Perfect System of Theology. And, you know, doesn't that just fit perfectly where God would have a, a, a system that he, that he uses to teach his children what the gospel is. And so chapter one lays out that system that one can follow. Chapter two is uh, about the center point of that system, Jesus Christ and his, his atoning sacrifice, and how that is the center, the center, center point and how everything else um, comes back to that center, center point. Um, chapter three is in some ways, chapter three is the oldest chapter in the book, um, in that it teaches what what a principle, uh, what a principle is, and that's a very important aspect of two testaments. You know, what is a principle of truth or of half truth or of untruth? And so, chapter three does a very good job of overviewing that of what a principle is and what it is not. Um, chapter four concerns the consequences of choosing a particular path over another path. So, you know, there's the path of righteousness and the path of self-righteousness and the path of unrighteousness. And, you know, what are the consequences of, of doing that? 
So the chapters one to four are the lead up to uh, chapters four through eight, which are what, what are what in the book Chris calls the guidebook. So chapter five is entitled The Doctrine of God, and it, it lays out all of the doctrines of God in the, in the New Testament and the Book of Mormon, like baptism and um, faith and repentance and baptism and, and receiving the Holy Ghost, and then what's the path that you go through after that and, and, and all of that sort of thing. So then once, you're, once you have an understanding, a comprehension of the doctrine of God, chapter six is the doctrine of men you know, human opinions, human theories, and human hypotheses, and human ruminations, and, um, and what, and a kind of a gray, what a gray area it, it does, um, it, it creates from the doctrine of God. After that, you get to chapter 7, and that's the, the doctrine of Satan, the dark, uh, complete opposites of the doctrine of, the doctrine of God, and all of the evil and um, um, uh, you know, objective-oriented uh, perspectives of the world. Um, then, after chapter 7, chapter 8 is lines up side by side all of the principles of the doctrine of God and the doctrine of men and the doctrine of Satan so that you can see them side by side. Now, now chapters 5, 6, and 7 had lined up the doctrines, their individual doctrines, by uh, the New Testament and the Book of Mormon, so that you can compare the New Testament to the Book of Mormon and see and see how that comes out. And then uh, chapter eight uh, lines up the all th- the principles of all three doctrines, so that you can see, compare, and contrast, and learn the differences. Um, so here, it's probably a good place to state uh, one of the really important contributions of two testaments is that the doctrines that are laid out in the New Testament and the doctrines that are laid out in the Book of Mormon line up perfectly. They, they match exactly. They're exactly the same. And that's an idea that that Chris Livingston feels ought to send shockwaves through the whole world. That's a, it's, a, it's a singularity to have that happen. Fascinating idea, and fascinating how he came to write the book, the way that it's it's constructed, the the idea that these two messages had not been compared previously is something that that I just find so amazing that he was the first person to think about this. I know that our listeners have to be really interested, and that they must be curious about where they can find the book. I always go to Amazon, the big bookseller in the sky, as it were, and look, and I want to say that you can find it on Amazon, and I want to give the full title, and I want to spell Chris's name and everything so that if someone goes to Amazon, they can just put this. There's a book search feature at the very top of the page. Put in. I th- I'll bet if you just put in two testaments, it might come up, but... Two Testaments, colon, a comprehensive comparison of the teachings of the New Testament and the Book of Mormon by Chris, C-H-R-I-S, Livingston, L-I-V-I-N-G-S-T-O-N. I put that in the search feature, clicked on it, the book came right up. In the upper right-hand corner, there's always a little... Q, I suppose, that says open here or look or some Q words like that. So if you'll click on those little Q words, it'll give you access to an excerpt from the book that's quite nice and it's quite well done. Where else, Shane, could they find the book? They can also find it. It was published through Author House, so they can go to authorhouse.com and search there for the ebook. And they can download the ebook. Uh, I believe one of the options is a PDF from Author House. And then Author House also has a number of avenues uh, that through which they sell the book. Uh, I believe Google Books um, sells it, and a number of other places as well. Generally, but Author Barnes House is probably the number one. Barnes and Noble is usually another one of their outlets as well, and they can download the ebook on any device, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have it on my phone, and I look at it. I look at it often. 
Oh, I think it's a great idea. And I think the millennials, for example, if they decide that they're interested in the book, this would be perfect. They could just put it on their phone and read read it anytime. Now, yeah, I have a I have a I have a paper copy that I I've had a number of paper copies uh, ever since I started helping Chris with the reviewing. Uh, so I prefer the paper copy, but it, it's a big book, so I I I don't take the paper copy with me everywhere. If I'm on the bus, I pull up my my uh, PDF and 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 browse that. Well, and if I'm honest with you, it's I touch. I like to touch books. Mm -hmm. There's something about that tactile sensation for me and being able to see the words there in print that I find so satisfying for some reason. I don't don't know what it is. I guess maybe I'm a, a tactile kind of person. Is there a website that our listeners could go to to find out more about Two Testaments? Yes, it's twotestaments.com, T-W-O-T-E-S-T-A-M-E-N-T-S.com. No spaces, and, right? Uh, no spaces or, or hyphen. What will they find if they go to the website? There are, there are several excerpts from the book that show uh, some of the comparisons and some of the commentary. You know, every, every doctrine in chapters 5, 6, and 7 and eight has a co- commentary page on the left and a comparison page on the right, and so they'll see uh, a number of e- excerpts from those com- commentaries and comparisons on the website. They'll find a link to Author House. Um, they'll find the. Uh, I'm not. I don't remember if there's a link to Amazon, but there might be one there. I always like to give. I, I'm going to say the author, but in this case. Shane Leon, the opportunity to have the last word about the book. What thoughts, Shane, would you like to leave the listeners with about Two Testaments? I think the number one lesson that I have learned from Two Testaments, I've had a front row seat and direct access to the researcher and compiler, Chris Livingston, and the number one lesson I have learned is the absolute, the 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 incredible importance of uh, the principles of righteousness and asking God to plant those in our hearts. It, it has revolutionized my life and um, in, 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 in increased my happiness beyond what I could have done on my, on my own. And I, I, I believe that the message of Two Testaments has the power to, to revolutionize and civilize the world and make us all brothers and sisters and friends and uh, do away with all kinds of conflict and contention. So I think Two Testaments has that power because it's the message of Jesus Christ in the New Testament and the Book of Mormon. That's a wonderful final message to leave our listeners with. Shane, thank you so much for being my guest today on Inside the Writer's Cafe. Thank you, Cheryl. I really appreciate it. Samuel Johnson once said, A writer begins a book. A reader finishes it. I'm Cheryl Nason, and you've been listening to Inside the Writer's Cafe, brought to you on webtalkradio.net. By the way, we're also on iTunes and iHeartRadio. Our time is up, and I'd like to thank you for yours. I hope that you'll join me next time for Inside the Writer's Cafe, but until then, remember to pick up a good book and read.